Okay, everybody, welcome back to the last episode of uh, my series on how to use Neat with OpenAI. I thought I'd do a short video on how to find the RAM values that you use to generate your data.json file and your uh, scenario.json file if you're using, um, if you want to modify that to get a different reward structure or whatever you need. The uh, first thing you're going to need to do is install the... Um, Back in the OpenAI retro library, uh, there's this section here, install from source. This is for building a, um, they call it the retro integration thing. Uh, it's uh, It looks like looks like this at the end of the day. It's a, it's a program that you can load games into, uh, games that you've already imported, like we did before. So we're Sonic. You can import the game into here. Oh, I hate how it... Unfortunately, one of the issues is that it flickers. It's really quite distracting. Uh, but you can load it into here and read the uh, RAM values directly out of the game live. So you can see... You can figure stuff out, like what is the RAM value that's associated with the... For example, X value, which happens to be FFD008. They're all in hex, so you also got to understand that. The type here, uh, I, to be perfectly honest, I'm not 100% good at explaining these. These are unsigned integers. These are signed integers. The greater than, less than bar thing, I don't really know what it is. It's like uh, if it's got a 1, it's, it's 1 byte. If it's got a 2, it's 2 bytes, probably 4 bytes. There's a bunch of different values. Uh, it's all explained on the OpenAI Retro homepage, and they have the method for compiling it here. You basically go into the... Here, actually, I'll show you what I did. I went into the... Um, boop, 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 boop. Come on, scroll back up. Sorry, I just got to go back to the top. Uh, so I went into the Code Tutorials folder, and um, I had to install Cap'n Proto. Cap'n Proto, which is listed as one of the files here for, um, for this is probably for Ubuntu, but I'm using um, Arch Linux, so I just all I needed to install was this. I probably already have Qt5 OpenGL and Qt5 Base because I'm using KDE to like it's my normal desktop environment. So you may need to install these things. You may need to install different things. Just look at the error messages when you install it. So I installed it right here. Uh, and then uh, I just ran the commands that they've listed here. So C make build whatever it sets up the configuration, and then this second function here does the actual compiling for you. And that's all this crud here. It took like maybe five minutes, wasn't too long. And then when it's done, you end up with a, uh, a binary in your oh, what's going on? Cancel. You end up with a binary in your root folder called Jim. Retro integration, okay, and you can just run it like this. Uh, at which point, so now what we'll do here is we'll load up uh, Sonic, and we can uh, we can try to find I don't know the X value if you want. We already know what it is, but we'll just just for the sake of something simple to figure out, because there's all kinds of values in the game, right? Like all literally every variable that changes, you can determine. Maybe not directly with this method, but in a, a similar method. Um, so we're going to load the original Green Hill Zone. Again, apologies for the flickering. If you guys can see that, it's it's incredibly distracting. I'm not totally sure what it is. I think it has to do with the fact that they built it in QT in the emulator. I don't know. Maybe they don't play nice together. Might be just my screen. I don't know. Uh, so yeah, here's Sonic. You can run him around, jump him and stuff. Nothing to it, right? Like the standard game stuff. And then on the right-hand side, you got a bunch of stuff here. Up here, we have the variables. These are the variables listed in the data.json file that we've already found. So we're in act zero. Uh, we have three lives listed there. No rings. So if we get a ring, this value should increase. Let's go get a ring. Again, apologies for the visual flickering. Boom. There we go. We got a ring, and that went up by one. Okay? The score didn't go up. I don't know what the score is associated with. Screen X and uh, Screen X and it's the the fact that like Sonic moves independent from the screen. It means there's two different variables for like I can move Sonic without moving the screen here, but if we move the screen, you see the screen value eventually goes up, right? So the X value here is FFD008, 
and it is an integer value uh two bytes i guess no assigned assigned integer value two bytes uh and there's the y1 in the zone we're going to use the search function down here to find this value i know we already know what it is but that's just going to help us look for it because it's it's not exactly easy to do so let's let's reload let's start from the base state okay uh, first thing you do is you're like, okay, we're going to find, find, we need to make a variable name. So X pos, like we were using inside the thing. Um, you get to pick from these things. Basically, the variables in the game change, and you can search for them by specifying really vague stuff like whether or not the variable changed since the last time you clicked search, or if it hasn't changed since the last time you clicked search, if it's increased, decreased, how much it's increased by, how much it's decreased by, and, or like direct values like is, like is equal to three or whatever. Um, <clears throat> it's going to result in a lot, I'll just show you, okay? So we're going to do, we're going to start with, uh, we haven't moved Sonic at all, so we're going to start with unchanged, okay? We're going to do a search. And that resulted in 982,998 variables, okay? So uh, not the, it gives you the value and all the different variables that resulted from this search. Okay, so now we're going to move Sonic, move him to the right a little bit, and we're going to change the unchanged to increased because his X position has increased, and we're going to search again. Now there's a hundred, oh, thirteen thousand. It's not bad. So we're going to do it again. Move him a little bit more to the right, and we're going to search again. Get down to two thousand eight hundred thirty-three. Move him to the right a little bit. Search again. 1500, not bad. Move him to the right again. Search. Come down to 675. Move him to the right. Search. 570. Move him to the right. Search. 439. I know there's a bad guy coming. I don't want to get killed. <laughs> Mad guy. Hoop. Search. Four, 379. Search. So you just. Oh. Oh, I died. <laughs> Uh, so let's just look. We'll look through the values. Oh, no, they're going to change now. So we're, we goofed, guys. We're super goofs. Let's load this again. And we can do the same thing, right? Um, we do need to go past where we were before, though. Boo -doo -boo -boo. Sonic the Hedgehog. Fuck you, buddy. Whoa, sprawled. Okay. We're going to search again. 270. So you can, at any point in time, just stop and have yourself a little scroll through here to see if anything makes any sense to you. Like, you sort of get an intuition for it. We know that we're looking for, uh, what's the value up here we're looking for? We are looking for, going down, uh, D008, and uh, it should have 864. We, we know that because we've already found this before. You wouldn't normally know that, so you'd have to kind of guess how many pixels have you moved. You've more moved probably more than 500. So you'd be like, okay, well, I gotta find, 800, well, you'd have to find a number that made some sense to you. So unfortunately, quite a few of them have that value, uh, which would make it hard to figure out exactly what you wanted. Um, so another thing you can do is you can change it to decreased and then run Sonic backwards. And back some more. And back some more. And it doesn't appear to be Change the value too much. Uh, now we're back down to, but you can see here all these values like this one here, 67. That's pretty clearly the x value. It's 179, 85. Right, like you can see it going. Oh shit! Run away. So, ooh, apparently Sonic tracks this valuable this. V variable in a lot of places. Come on, Sonic. We kind of like one that worked pixel by pixel. This one seems to be going in chunks, so that's not great. We want one that moves faster. Uh, you can't directly eliminate them, I don't believe. Uh, let's go find our guy. Is he even in here? Yeah, there he is there. So like we would be scrolling through and be like, oh look, that one works exactly correct. That's every pixel we move, he moves a pixel up. We'd be like, perfect, that's the one. Actually, there's two here. There's the I2 and the uh, the U2. So we can go, once we've found the one that we think is the value we want, we can go make variable. 
and then that adds it up here and then we can go data save variables and save it as data and that will add that value forever to the data file and then we can use it in our our emulator okay guys uh, the other cool thing to look in here is there's a scenario editor so the scenario editor uh, lets you define the done situation and the rewards so it currently has X which we set personally remember we manually did that in the file the a change in X gives a reward of one and a penalty of zero per every time per every frame for player one um, you can what will we have here will we have uh, yeah so we have when lives is zero set done this is the done section down here we can make this uh, when lives is um, less than two uh, which would be the three lives that you get to be in a game zero counts uh, set the done variable to true so the done variable is listed over here so let's go get this and let's go kill Sonic once Okay, what we're, what we're looking for is this right here, the none variable to go to zero. Kill me, bud. Kill me. Do it. Yeah. Oh, I didn't kill me. Damn rings. No, no rings. Okay. <laughs> oh, come on. Okay, I don't, want to, I don't want him to kill me. Kill me. Bam. So now done is... I did not save or reset the scenario file. Anyways, that's how that works. Okay, guys. <laughs> it's a great, great tutorial. One where I screw it up. Uh, hopefully that's helpful. Just for the record, I do have a Patreon. I will link to it in the description. Uh, if you guys would like to see me do more of these videos or maybe clarify some stuff in this one or do a different game with Neat, uh, I'm happy to do that. I also have uh, some solutions for various other types of reinforcement learning like DQNs. Um, I can show you how to use all the stuff that OpenAI released with their retro library. Uh, I, have a, I personally wrote one that works with Keras. Uh, and it doesn't evolve the network shape, but it evolves the weights in the network. Uh, what else can I do for you guys? Uh, yeah, it doesn't even have to be related to the open AI stuff. Um, you know, if you want anything explained with neural networks, I will to the best of my ability. Um, otherwise, you know, enjoy your day. See you guys.